Hi, and welcome to Code Corner. This is a video series that we like to do at Mayfield Renewables, where we talk about codes and standards as they relate to the PV and solar plus storage industries. So today we're gonna to talk about UL 9540, 9540A. So 9540 being the listing for energy storage systems, and then 9540A being the test method that accompanies that listing. And so we're just gonna kind of get into, you know, what those are, what they mean to you, and you know, how they apply to the different codes. So first off, let's talk about you know the, the codes where we see this. So 9540, you'll actually see it in NFPA 70 or the National Electrical Code. And it shows up in Article 706. Uh, in the informational notes is where you're actually gonna see it in 706.1 of the scope of energy storage systems, the, the article that deals with ESS. And really what, you know, so it's an informational note. So it's just saying that, hey, these there's these standards listings that are out there that apply to our ESS systems. And 706.5 actually says energy storage systems shall be listed. So those are our references in the NEC. So they point back to, among other things, the NFPA 855, which we'll talk about here in a second. And it, they, they do point to UL 9540 in the scope of the document. So again, it is a, a, a informational note um, so it's, you know, there as information, it's not a part of the code. It's not code language per se, but it's there to, to kind of help guide you to, you know, what listings apply. Where it does show up is if you go look in the 2023 NFPA 855, which is the standards for installation of stationary energy storage systems, you'll see it in 15.2, uh, and you'll also see it in chapter nine as well. So 15, Chapter 15 deals with residential energy storage systems. Uh, chapters four through nine deal with really all, all um, other systems, so typically commercial and industrial. But so you'll see that reference in both 15 and chapter nine, where it says that the ESS shall be um, labeled, listed and labeled in accordance with UL 9540. So there is a very definitive, to meet 855, you shall meet this. And then, as you see there in the International Fire Code, in section 1207, same thing happens. So it's the same type of language. 855 and IFC have very, very similar language. And so they'll, they'll very often uh, have exactly the same language. And in this case, 1207 in the IFC says you shall have listed uh, ESS. So for our systems that we're installing today, these lithium, lithium ion battery systems, in order to meet fire codes in uh, 855 and really NEC, we're gonna have to have listed systems. And so when you are dealing with manufacturers, when you're dealing with systems, you wanna look at the system as a whole, what is that listing, what does it entail? Because sometimes we will have individual parts and pieces that are uh, designed to go together, but they may not be listed to go together. And so that's uh, a key differentiation that you should be asking your manufacturer when you are looking to install these systems. So UL 9540, what is it? it that right now we are on uh, version two or rev two of 9540. Uh, we will talk about the third edition here coming up in a minute, but 9540, it's a safety standard that is for the construction, manufacturing, performance testing of grid-tied energy storage systems. And so these are systems uh, that are gonna include storage, uh, typically inverters, whatever or whatever uh, management systems that you need to have in order to, to uh, run that system as a whole. The 9540 does define you know, what we have here. It says electrical, mechanical, fluent containment, environmental tests, performance tests, uh, along with the safety tests. So what, UL 9540 does, it puts a document together that any nationally recognized testing lab or NERDL would be able to test a energy storage system. So if you have a residential application, you know, your manufacturer will take all of their components and test it as a whole system that works together, designed to go together. This isn't to say it has to be all in one box by any means. It can be separate com compartments, can be separate containers. All of those are gonna be at the listed they're gonna to have to test those together and then manufacturer will say, here's how you are going to install this. You would you know, put this in, um, in this environment 
this is how you connect the two boxes, the three boxes, whatever they are together. Here's the field wiring that has to happen. All of that is part of the listing process because that's, you know, the manufacturer's instructions are part of that. And, you know, that would include um, how you would install that in the field. So again, this is a system level standard and it's taking multiple components. Very often you might, you might see system components, uh, batteries and UL 1741 inverters that are put together inside these cabinets. And so the idea here is again, it's system level. So you are evaluating the system as a whole, not individual components. All right, so what is in UL 9540? So again, the second edition is what we're working on. It was released in February, 2020. We have a third edition that's been written, it's been released and it will come, we'll start using it uh, come 2024. But first off in the second edition, the UL 9540A test method for thermal runaway became part of the part of the standard. And so now when manufacturers list their components, list their systems to 9540A, the, to 9540, the 9540A test method will be part of that listing. So that will be, it will come with it. Uh, first revision didn't have that. So we will now have that as just standard protocol. Um, and then you also see that, you know, we had some stuff addressed in terms of you know, uh, installation instructions uh, that were included in the 9540 listing, uh, the upgrade, and now that, and there's some also some requirements around metallic listings for uh, metallic, excuse me, metallic containers for the ESS requirements. So those are, you know, some of the big things that were changed in the second edition from the first edition and what, what you'll see in, in that standard itself. So 9540A is the other part that I wanted to talk about. And this is, first thing to note is that this is a test method. It's not, it's <clears throat> included as part of the listing in that second edition, as I just mentioned, but it's a test method. And so you're not gonna see a 9540A listed system. What you're gonna see is a UL 9540A documentation and the test that went with it and be able to give you the data to help um, understand what happens if and when this system goes into thermal runaway. So the big thing with 9540A is trying to, when they're doing this test, they're trying to drive it, at the, drive it into thermal runaway. So they're trying to catch it on fire. And then they're measuring what happens when that when it does. And as we, as we note here, 9540A provides answers to a couple critical questions is, you know, one, can that ESS be driven to thermal runaway to begin with? And if so, what happens? What are the fire and explosion hazards that are associated with that? So this is important information. Manufacturers will be able to provide this data to you. And what this actually does is it gives you the ability in fire codes in in a PA855, they talk about minimum space requirements as one example. So off the, you know, the standard language in, in a PA855 and in fire code is that units have to be spaced three feet apart. Unless the, the testing, the 9540A testing can prove that they can be, uh, that distance can be shrunk. And so this is where one of the, the big areas of uh, reasoning for doing this for manufacturers is they want to be able to put those units together. They want to keep it as tight as possible, make the installation easier uh, for you as possible. So that 9540A is going to give us a lot of data and it's what the codes say is that it's going to be made available to the AHJs or it shall be made available to the AHJs for their evaluation and their acceptance of, you know, how you're going to install this if it's separate, separate or different from what the, uh, what the fire code requirements are. So you'll notice uh, we have a call out here in NFPA 855 to 15, chapter 15, 13.1. And again, that's residential. There's similar language for commercials, just basically saying, um, you know, the testing, con the testing conducted with, within UL 9540A uh, requirements um, can supersede, you know, the, the general requirements of the installation. And then finally, uh, just, you know, pointing out the third edition, it was um, it was written, it was released April 2023. It's not effective till September 30th, 2024. So we still have some time for this to get uh, put into play and um, being adopted by the different NERDLs. Um, 
But just some of the highlights that we have on there are talking about, you know, differentiating between AC and DC energy storage systems. There's some lead acid, uh, nickel cadmium compliance, um, things that were added into there. Early warning communication systems. Um, and on the residential side, one of the big ones is that the ESS has to meet this unit level rather than the cell level uh, performance criteria for 9540. I didn't get too far in. I didn't really get into what that difference testing methods are in 9540, but there's different, they can go from cell, unit, module, or system level, and so it just depends on what the manufacturer, how far, how they did their testing, um, and you can see here in the residential, it uh, has to be at least at the unit level. Um, and then we have these, some OSHA requirements uh, that are, that have been put in there. Again, not till 2024, September in 2024 will this come into play. And the other thing is, you know, this is up to the manufacturers. This is not as a, an installer, engineer, anything like that. This is not up to you to be making sure that they meet this. This is just, you know, the manufacturer has to, to do this uh, testing and listing. All right. So that's going to, you know, very brief overview on 9540, I realize. But I encourage you to take a look at our website. We do actually have some great, uh, in, very much in-depth um, courses on energy storage and uh, fire codes, national electrical code. And so we get much more into 9540, 9540A. So there's a lot more information in there. So I uh, highly encourage you to take a look at that. These I'm really excited about these courses that we have on our own website. Uh, so you can see the, the URL there where you can go look at those and see if that's something that you may want, might want to take uh, and participate in. And then finally, you know, thank you for taking your time. I really appreciate it. And if you have questions, comments on this or any other uh, Code Corners that you might want to see, uh, happy to hear from you so you can reach out to us and would love to talk with you.